Five jockeys and two horse trainers have been convicted of plotting to fix 16 races at the Garden State Racetrack during the 1974-75 meet. Two others on trial, one jockey, the other a trainer, acquitted by the jury in Mount Holly. The seven who were convicted were found guilty of accepting more than $58,000 from a reputed mob figure, Anthony Big Tony Chula of Massachusetts. No sentencing date has been set, but each of those convicted could get a prison term of at least three years. Their attorneys say there will be appeals. Still no verdict in the great mob trial in Freehold. Twice today, the jury asked to hear transcripts read back to them, and then late this afternoon, they broke for the day. Phelps Hawkins reports. The four women and ten men, including two alternate jurors, filed into the courtroom this morning to hear the testimony of Barbara Fasanello, the former wife of the state's star witness, Patrick Pizzuto. The court reporter read her recounting of how she picked up Pizzuto after he and Anthony DeVingo allegedly murdered Trenton mobster Paul Campanile in March 1975. Then they listened to a tape of Vito Montemorano, one of the four defendants, trying to shake down a shore businessman for $15,000. While in the courtroom, the jurors did not look at the defendants or their lawyers. During the lunch break, members of the defense team walked toward downtown Freehold for lunch, smiling and appearing casual. Then late this afternoon, the jury requested the court again return so the judge could re-explain the state statute on extortion, what is meant by aiding and abetting, and also what constitutes entrapment. They then listened to another tape of Vito Montemorano talking to a state police undercover agent. In Freehold, I'm Phelps Hawkins. There are now only four defendants instead of five in the great mob trial in Freehold. This morning, Thomas Peewee de Phillips of Belleville tossed in the towel and negotiated a partial guilty plea with state prosecutors. Phelps Hawkins has the details and their possible effects. Thomas de Phillips could have faced 36 years in prison and $17,000 in fines. But after some last minute negotiations and with the jury ordered out of the courtroom, Chief State Prosecutor Mickey Brown told the court that the state recommends a sentence of only five years. For that, DePhillips entered pleas of guilty to conspiracy and sports bookmaking. The state then dropped charges of loan sharking and maintaining a lottery. So how important is this plea bargain? Well, it was certainly important to DePhillips, who left the courtroom admitting his intense relief that he's now out of it. But that's about all. Deputy Attorney General John Sheehy, in the state's opening argument yesterday, stated that he would list the defendants in the order of their importance, most important first, and DePhillips was the last one named. Also, lawyers for the other defendants said DePhillips' departure would not affect their clients, although he may be called later as a witness. Strategically, however, there may be one advantage to the state. Defense attorneys admit that the major eventual argument for a mistrial will be the issue of severance. That is, they'll argue that each defendant should have been tried separately, that one defendant's apparent guilt would almost certainly affect the verdicts for the others. So possibly, by narrowing the field to the more important figures, the bigger fish, the state may be also safeguarding a definite result to the trial, be it guilty or not guilty, rather than a mistrial. I'm Phelps Hawkins. Defense attorneys wrapped up their opening arguments this afternoon, and the state began its testimony. The next several days are expected to be taken up with te technical testimony about wiretaps. Jury selection finally got underway today in the organized tri crime trial in Freehold, and there were more fireworks between attorneys and Judge Michael Embriani. And as Phelps Hawkins reports, that could indicate a long trial. The selection of a jury from an initial pool of some 250 Monmouth County residents was supposed to start at 9 this morning. It did not, and there was no mistaking Judge Imbriani's anger over the delay. As was the case yesterday, the thorn in the judge's side was Miles Feinstein, attorney for alleged mob hitman Anthony DeVingo. Feinstein and the judge engaged in several yelling matches yesterday, and the scene was repeated once this morning after Feinstein moved for a mistrial. He claimed that Judge Imbriani's prejudice against the defendants was polluting the jury. Imbriani dismissed the motion, at one point saying to Feinstein, Enough is enough. I will not allow you to run this court. When a first group of prospective jurors, 60 of them, filled the small spectator section of the courtroom, the judge told them he wanted to know if they recognized any of the names on the proposed witness list. 
It then took him 15 minutes to just read the names on the list, several hundred of them. That first group was then led from the room to be brought back in one at a time for more detailed questioning. There were questions like whether each juror would be influenced by the foul language that dominates the wiretaps, whether the defendant's nicknames would influence the juror's opinions. The judge also asked at the request of defense lawyers if the candidates had read any books or seen any movies about organized crime in the last year. The process today ran at a pace of one juror every half hour, or 50 a week. Given that this is just the first round of selection, the attorneys have yet to interrogate jurors who make it through the judge's screening. Several key participants agreed just the jury selection process could take three weeks to a month. Judge Imbriani said today, he expects the whole trial will run no more than three months. I'm Phelps Hawkins. A federal judge has ruled investigators acted properly when they bugged the apartments of the late reputed rackets boss, Anthony Russo. The ruling came today in Newark at a pretrial hearing for five men accused of skimming profits from a Las Vegas casino. Attorneys were trying to suppress evidence of conversations picked up by those listening devices in Russo's New Jersey office and Las Vegas apartment. Russo was murdered at his Long Branch apartment last April. He, Ruggiero Boyardo, and five others have been accused of skimming profits from the Jolly Trolley Casino. Boyardo has been severed from the case because of ill health. Four New Jersey men and two others have been arrested on charges of attempting to smuggle heroin with a wholesale value of $10 million. Two New Jersey or two Jersey Hill men or Cherry Hill men, Rosario and Giuseppe Gambino, are being held on $250,000 bail each. The two operate Valentino Supper Club in Cherry Hill, and authorities say they are second cousins of the late reputed crime boss Carlo Gambino. Two brothers from Delran, New Jersey, were also charged. They were arrested along with a third brother in Milan, Italy, yesterday. A sixth man, alleged accomplice, was arrested in Brooklyn. Federal drug agents say the men allegedly were conspiring to fly 92 pounds of heroin from Afghanistan and Iran to New York through Milan. The six each face 15 years in prison and $15,000 fines on those federal charges.